Author Robert Caro has spent more than 30 years researching the life of President Lyndon Baines Johnson. It's a huge project, matching one of America's really larger-than-life figures. The Pulitzer Prize winner has just written The Passage of Power, the fourth in his series of books on LBJ. Robert Caro is with us here in Studio 57. Welcome. Glad to be here. What's extraordinary about this, and, and there's an amazing review in the New York Times yesterday, is that we see this transfer of power because of the assassination of a president through the eyes of Lyndon Johnson. Yes, you know, it's never been really told before. There are a thousand books on the assassination, but what was happening to Johnson? In fact, as the first shot cracks out, and President Kennedy starts to lean to his left, the Secret Service agent in Johnson's car, in the front seat, leans over, grabs Johnson by the shoulder, throws him on the floor, and then leaps on top of him and lays on top of him as the car speeds to Parkland Hospital, shielding his body with his own. Mm. And then you tell the story of how they told Lyndon Johnson oh, the president amazing. was dead. Yes. For 40 minutes, no one tells him. He's standing in this cubicle in the emergency room of Parkland Hospital against the wall, not moving. No, he asks for information. No one gives him a definite word. And then Lady Bird Johnson writes that Kenny O'Donnell, Kennedy's friend and aide, walks in and, and she says, seeing the stricken face of Kenny, who loved him, we knew. Mm -hmm. And then a moment later, someone else comes in and says, Mr. President. That's mm -hmm. the first time anyone's called it's Johnson Mr. Him. President. No, uh, Charlie just mentioned, Bob, about the reviews that you've gotten in no, the New York Times. No, no. Really, they keep coming in brilliant riveting read from beginning to end, a real tour de force. And may I say, it's very big, too. I could lift weights with this the other day with this book. But I'm so fascinated because this is your fourth volume that you've done yes. on Lyndon Johnson. Yeah. When you started with number one, were you intending for it to be this long, his no, life? No. It was what was your intention when you started? It was supposed to be just three books. Three books. Three Can books. I just tell you one story? I interviewed yes. him at the time of the first book. Uh -huh. Do you remember this? Yes, I do. And I said to him, you're going to, because he'd written, what, nine years, ten years to write the first one? The, uh, seven. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, you're going to spend a lifetime writing this. And he said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> 30 years. Yeah, cut to 30 it, it years is, later. Yeah. It feels like a lifetime. But what I was fascinated about, I did, number one, I didn't know I was so interested in Lyndon Johnson until I started reading your stuff, but that he knew that he wanted to be president. He first said it at the age of 13. He said, I'm going to be president. Here's his teenage kid. Fascinating. He's, he's very poor. He's yeah. working on a road gang in the middle of nowhere. I went to the site in the isolated hill country. Nothing's around. At lunchtime, the other workers would sit down, they were all older men, and this 13-year-old kid would say, start talking and say, I'm going to be president of the United States mm -hmm. one day. Mm -hmm. What's extraordinary, too, is that you, you tell the story of the plane ride back, and yes. Mrs. Kennedy, and they have to go get Mrs. Kennedy yes. to come for the swearing in. Yes. And she agreed to do that. Yes. She understood the moment, too. Yes. And Johnson said an amazing thing. He understood that the entire weight of the world had come on his shoulders. Yes. And that he had to do the right thing because the world wanted to be reassured. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And to see him do it, it's like he changes in a moment from the insecurity of the vice presidential years. We had been treated badly in badly. his eyes. We had been treated very badly and acted hangdog and mm -hmm. gloomy. Suddenly he is... Men said when they saw him on the plane, when he gets back to Air Force One in Dallas, they said they saw a different man. Yeah. I mean, he was in charge. And how did it work since he didn't seem to get along with Robert F. Kennedy very well? Yeah. That seemed to be a very dicey relationship you know, between the two of them. You don't want to use words like this as a historian, mm -hmm. but hatred is mm -hmm. the right word to mm -hmm. describe Robert Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson. They hated each other, you know, from the first time they met. Someone said the first time they met, it was like two strange dogs walking into a room and there's a low growl and the hair rises on their neck. It never stops. And Bobby Kennedy says to one of Johnson's aides, you're going to get yours when the time comes. Mm -hmm. The vice presidency, Robert Kennedy, is in charge and he can humiliate Johnson and he humiliates him at every opportunity. And then with the crack of a gunshot, the world is reversed, and Johnson has the power over Bobby But he Kennedy. still fears him. Jo Johnson always feared Robert Kennedy. He, he hated him, but he knew what a great politician he was. Because you know why, Charlie? He had been fighting against him for the 1960 nomination. Bobby Kennedy was running Jack's campaign. You can't... Johnson was known as the best vote counter. He realizes yeah. there's a guy against him 
who's just as good as he is. Oh, he was a smart guy, but could I talk about you for just a second? Because sure. I was just as fascinated, Robert Carroll, reading about you, oh, that you wear a suit and tie every day, that you go to work every day, that you write longhand, that you actually wrote this book longhand on yellow paper just like this, that your lovely wife you've been married many years is the only person you really trust, is your researcher and assistant. And I'm so curious about you and why you do what you do. Well, the reason I wear a coat and tie, which everybody <laughs>, laughs at me for, oh, I'm is, not you know, laughing. I like it. I like it. You look nice. Well, I'll come back. Thank okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anytime. But, you know, you, my publisher doesn't bother me. My, ye my books take years to do, seven or eight years. My publisher never asks. So it's really easy to fool yourself that you're working harder than you are. <laughs> so I use every trick to make myself know it's a job. And one of them is I put on a coat and tie. Another one is I write down the number of words that I, that I write every day. Yeah. You have all, the, all these little tricks to remind yourself it's work. Well, you're doing something right. You sure Thank are. You. Robert Caro, right. The Years of Lyndon Johnson, The Passage of Power. This one, it is now in sale. Nice to see you. Nice Great. to see Honor you. To Thank you. you.